Hi, welcome back. Uh, we're going to think about uh, evidence of evolution and phylogeny today. Um, some of the aspects going to be covered are going to be the evidence for new different classification systems and um, where we get the idea of what we call three domains and some of the links between classification and phylogeny. So phylogeny, what is phylogeny? Or they might talk about phylogenetics. Um, a lot of the classification that was done up until the end of the 19th century was all about external features, so looking at what something looked like. Um, but that causes some problems. If you've got things, species which have evolved bec and because they need a particular characteristic, um, then they might actually look similar despite not being related to each other. So a classic example, wasps and hoverflies. They both look similar, they've got uh, yellow and brown stripes, but they are in no way evolutionarily related to each other. Um, other examples are species that might be fairly similar to each other, but uh, uh, don't look as if they are. Um, think about a wolf and a chihuahua dog. Yeah, they are fairly closely related in evolutionary terms, but look fairly dissimilar in terms of characteristics. So um, just by using the external characteristics, we don't necessarily get a true idea of their evolutionary relationship. So we need to look at other things instead. Um, a phylogeny trying to put things in the right groups. So the biological species concept, the idea of organisms which can interbreed to give a fertile offspring, uh, that's fine as long as the, the organism is not extinct because you can't tell whether they interbreed if they're extinct. Um, and I say it only applies to organisms which reproduce sexually. So phylogenetics is more about evolutionary relationships or lineage. Um, if two uh, different species have differences, um, then or sufficient number of differences, then we end up saying that they might be a separate species. Um, but deciding on where that definition of how much difference is important can be tricky sometimes. Let's look at some evidence for phylogenetics. Now we've already talked about anatomical and embryological and behavioural difference because that was all um, information that was available to people in the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th century. We're going to think about more uh, complex evidence like biochemical and immunological evidence, which is what we use to contribute to our understanding of genetics nowadays. So one of the primary pieces of evidence might be using um, the sequence of proteins. Now remember, if an organism is going to be different, then quite often its proteins might end up being different. Uh, so therefore, looking at the sequence of how a protein is made up may help to tell us when those differences occurred and how, how different an organism is from another organism. So humans and chimpanzees, for example, they have zero differences in their cytochrome C. The cytochrome C is a, a chemical found in the mitochondria. It's used in respiration. If you look at the sort of sequence the primary sequence, remember, primary protein structure, sequence of amino acids that makes up an organism, you find that they are exactly the same. The further away an organism is from an uh, evolutionary relationship, the more differences there are in those amino acids. Um, so between dogs and humans, there are 10 amino acid differences. Between yeast and humans, there are 38 and so on. But um, every organism has this cytochrome C, just the further it is uh, away from which we have evolved from it, uh, therefore the more differences there are. Uh, now we can do DNA sort of comparison as well. We can extract and compare DNA sequences uh, and look at the, how similar they are. So um, here's some examples to show you. Um, these organisms might be quite similar because they've got kind of similar bands here, um, but Mice and chickens, they have only a couple of similarities. Um, I think, yeah, let's just re reset this and show you how we use to do this particular thing. Um, we're looking at um, the DNA and we can amplify up the DNA, make multiple copies so we can look at that using something called a polymerized chain reaction. See you next year for more details. Um, we separate the DNA using gel electrophoresis, passing an electrical current through something, and the more positively or negatively charged or the heavier something is, the more difficult it is to move around. So you can separate up chunks of DNA. You get these bands or stripes, which sort of when you stain them, they show up. So um, if you're looking at particular examples, these three different bacteria species, which of these would be closely, more closely related? Well, this one and this one, 
have more similarities in their stripes, striping patterns. One, uh, I worked out earlier there were about seven similarities between these two and only three or four between those and only two between those. So if you were to draw a phylogenetic tree, you would say that these two are more closely related to each other, so they have a common ancestor, whereas the common ancestor between all three of them is further back. So you're starting at the bottom, uh, the branches off to give that one versus those two. Immunological evidence, well, if in immunology um, we're looking at um, reactions between uh, one thing and another, uh, if you think about your immune system, uh, you should be familiar with this a little bit from GCSE. Remember, you have white blood cells that make antibodies to help to fight off diseases, um, and they react to what we call antigens, things on the surface of those uh, things, to be able to fight, uh, produce the antibodies and fight them off. So if we mix um, part of human blood, the serum, into rabbits, uh, which contains the antigen, the rabbits then make anti-human antigens, or antibodies rather, antibodies, not antigens, they make anti-human antibodies, and you then use this rabbit serum and uh, compare it to other blood, the more similar an organism is, the more similar, the, uh, the more precipitate you get. So humans and chimpanzees, they have lots of precipitate because they have very similar blood, whereas the less related they are, the less precipitate is produced. Remember, precipitate is such a chunky solid in a liquid, just in case you weren't sure. So um, how do we put phylogenetics into practice? You've got to think about features that might be in common, but beca uh, not because they have evolved in common, but because they've arisen from a common ancestor. And some of that best evidence is obviously from DNA, use DNA to be able to um, look at that, look at the similarities, rather than external features, because sometimes external features could be tricky. Dolphins and uh, sharks look fairly similar, but they have evolved from a similar, different place. Just because they've got similar features doesn't put them in the same category. Okay, I'm going to pause there. Um, we're going to stop this video now. Um, we're trying to make these videos a little bit shorter. Come back to us for part two and we'll begin again on the evolution of classification. Okay, thanks for listening.